everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angie, it's nice to have you guys here. Today I've got a tag video. I saw Shannon from Pages and Polish do this and thought it sounded like fun and like something that I wanted to film. This is the 20 questions book tag. Love books, as you can kind of tell behind me. I have a lot of books, this is only a fraction of them. So when I saw her do this tag and listen to her answers and listen to the questions, I thought they sounded really good and like they'd be a lot of fun to answer. So that's what I'm going to do today. I've got the questions on my laptop, they're on a blog post. I will link Shannon's video of the tag and the blog post to the questions in the description box below if you would like to do any of these. So question number one. How many books are too many for a series? I think as long as the series is still going okay, like as long as they're not stretching out the plot beyond belief, then I'm happy for as many books in the series. So if it's a series where each book is kind of its own self-contained plot, but it's the characters that kind of continue from one book to the next, like that's totally fine. But if it's a series where it's one plot spread over a number of books, then I kind of feel like three or four is a nice number, five at the most. And I also don't mind if there's like a primary series that's just a few books, but then there's like spin-offs or sequels or prequels or other continuations. Like as long as there's still something more to say about the characters, then that's okay with me. Number two, how do you feel about cliffhangers? I, I don't like them, especially in books because it can take so long. I mean, even if you know for sure that you have the publishing deal for the next books, I'm really impatient and it doesn't make me want to go get the next book any faster. It just makes me irritated. So if I hear of a new series that people are raving about and they say it's really good and it makes me want to read it but they're also saying but oh my gosh the cliffhangers in between each new release I will wait until the series is completely done like I don't like cliffhangers I don't mind being left feeling like there's still stuff happening in the story but there needs to be some amount of resolution if it literally is like a character hanging off a cliff and you don't know if they're going to survive in the next book or not. That just irritates me. But number three, hardcover or paperback? A hardcover is my preference. I mean, it's what I like the most, but for me it's whatever's cheapest. So if the Kindle version is cheaper, I will buy it on Kindle. If the paperback is cheaper, I will buy it in paperback. So sometimes there's books where it's like, I will wait until Either I know there will be used copies or until it comes out in paperback. But yeah, cost is always the most important thing. So I will get hardcovers, if there, especially if there are used copies like available on Amazon or if I'm at a used bookstore. Um, I love hard hardcover books. Number four, favorite book. I can't pick that. I, I can't. I can't even like pick a top ten. I love books so much and I've been reading since I was really young. So I feel like that. I probably should do like a video on like the 10 or 15 most influential books in my life. That might be interesting, let me know if you want me to do that. But yeah, I... <sighs> favorite book I've read recently? Like, favorite book in the last like five years or so, I'd say, is probably The All Souls Trilogy by Deborah Harkness. See, even then, I can't pick one book, I've got to pick a trilogy. That I think that's the best I can do, favorite book in the last five years. Rob. There have been a lot that I've liked, but like I've actually reread that trilogy a couple times since reading it the first time. Number five, least favorite book. There, there are two books that I'm thinking of, contemporary women's fiction. I wouldn't call them chick lit, but def definitely kind of women's fiction. I can't remember what the first one was called, but it was by a fairly prominent female author who has had wonderful things said about her other books. This one sounded interesting. It had a great premise. The execution was awful. So I did not like that book. And then the other book was called Finishing School. That again, the, the premise was great. Like both of these books, the descriptions on the back won me over. I was like, yeah, this sounds good. And usually I've got a really good sense of that. Usually if I read the back of the book and think it sounds good, 
I at least enjoy it, if not absolutely love it. But these two, nope, they were both awful. I think they're still in my bedroom, but they're about, when I start cleaning in there this summer, they're gonna get put into the Goodwill donation box because I'm, will never read them again. I will never recommend them to anyone, so there's no reason to keep them in my collection. Number six, love triangles, yes or no? Hell no. I hate, hate love triangles. I've never seen one done well. I've read a ton of romance novels. I've seen a bunch of romance films, TV shows. I watched soap operas for 20 years, more than 20 years, before I eventually had to kind of give it up during grad school. Just couldn't keep up with them. So I've seen a million love triangles. I've seen them be done in every conceivable way, and they never work. They are always awful for me. And I think it's because they're just so predictable. There's always one character. So like if it's a, a girl choosing between two guys, one of those male characters is never as developed as the other. And they're always basically reduced to a plot device as just being something to put a conflict between the two characters that you do want to be together. I've never seen a love triangle where I have honestly been torn over which one I want the person to pick. So I hate love triangles. And if I, ca if I catch even the slightest scent of a love triangle in a book, I won't read it. I won't, I, I won't go near it. Number seven, the most recent book you couldn't finish. I will finish every book I start reading even if it takes me years. I'm currently thinking of the copy of Jane Eyre I have that's only half read. I have been thinking about picking that up this summer though and, and reading it from the beginning, like just starting over. I don't think, when I started it, I don't think I was like in the right place age-wise, emotion-wise. I just, I think some books, especially with the classics, you've got to be in the right headspace. But certainly of all of the contemporary books that I've read, I might start skipping pages. I might start like skimming, but I will always finish. Just because I think I always have hope that it will get better in the end. I do try, I do for the most part. Other than Jane Eyre, but again, I'm not dead yet, so I can still finish reading that book. There's never been a book that I have intentionally said, I'm not finishing this. Number eight, a book you're currently reading. I'm currently reading Time's Convert by Deborah Harkness, and it is a kind of spin-off, kind of continuation of All Souls the All Souls trilogy. So it's the same characters, but now some of the secondary characters are kind of bumped into the primary spot and it's a different plot line, but it's still a, a continuation of that world. So I'm really liking it about halfway through it. We'll probably finish it after I finish filming this video. Number nine, last book you recommended to someone. I've been recommending The Vampire Knitting Club to quite a few people. <laughs> I just am loving it. And they're just such light, fun, easy books that are still entertaining and which I think is, I think that's a hard balance. Sometimes books that are light and easy and fun aren't really worth recommending, but these ones I've absolutely loved them. If you're looking for something that's just fun but fairly decent mysteries, they're not, some of them have been more predictable than others. But so far, like, I'm just, I'm liking the plot. It's kind of like a murder she wrote type plot where every book is a different murder and it's this girl who owns a knitting shop and there just happen to be vampires who live underneath it and they have a knitting club. And they're also really good amateur detectives and so somehow, kind of like um, watching Inspector Lewis, you don't realize how many people get murdered in the town of Oxford. Um, so it's set in Oxford, England and someone gets murdered there almost every week it seems. <laughs> but yeah, they're real they're really cute, really funny. They don't take themselves too seriously. But yeah, really enjoy them. Number 10, oldest book you've read by publication date. Well, if we're stretching this to fictional works in general, I have read a bunch of Greek plays. <laughs> um so like Lysistrata might be the oldest one. But if we're saying like book Jane Austen? 
I don't think I've read anything prior to the 19th century, early 19th century, in terms of novels. I think Jane Austen's probably the oldest, because she was writing before even publishing, even though they got published after... When were they published? Where's my Jane Austen? So now I'm thinking, she, she was published 1813 for Pride and Prejudice. Oh, Sense and Sensibility was 1811. I'm gonna hold that out. So I actually kind of want to read that one again. Yeah, so Jane Austen, Sense and Sensibility is probably the oldest book I've read by publication date. Number 11, newest book you've read by publication date, probably book six of The Vampire Knitting Club, because that came out just a couple months ago. Number 12, favorite author. Uh, I can't really pick. I have a lot of books by Sophie, Sophie Kinsella, and I have read several of her books more than once. So I would be inclined to say her. But I also really love Deborah Harkness. Really love Jane Austen. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll say them. We'll say those three. <laughs> Number 13. Buying books or borrowing books? I mean, I prefer to buy. I like having my own copies. I like feeling like I can highlight them or mark a page. I like adding to my collection. I like being surrounded by books. It just it makes me feel happy and secure and a little less lonely sometimes because if you're feeling lonely just pick up a book and you're not alone anymore. So I do like buying books. Like I've got a solid collection now even on my Kindle. So even if I'm out and all I have is my iPad or my phone, I've got my Kindle app on both and they're synced so like I can read whatever book I want. So yeah, I, I do like buying books. Number 14, a book you dislike that everyone seems to love. I mean, if I think I'm gonna dislike a book, even if everyone loves it, I just won't buy it and I won't read it. But I will say, everyone raved about Girl on a Train and I was very disappointed. Didn't think it was that good. Number 15, bookmarks or dog ears. I, I, it surprises me that this is such a controversial question. I feel like some people have very strong thoughts on this and I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. I have no problem dog earing a book certain books. Obviously, if it's not a book I own, if it's from the library or a book a friend has loaned me, I will not dog ear it. That's rude. <laughs> um, but if it's a book I own and it's a, a fiction or one of my research books, the only books in my collection that I will not dog ear are my nice photo glossy page coffee table books. I will not dog ear these. I will get very mad if anyone does. I will use bookmarks to mark pages that I want to come back to. Yeah, when I'm, if I'm using, when I was, when I would use these for like costume design research or research for my dissertation, that's what sticky, that's what post-it notes are for, that's what bookmarks are for, and I wouldn't sit down to go through them without appropriate marking materials. But if it's just a mass, paperback. I, I have, don't think I've bookmarked, I don't think I've dog-eared any of these. Doesn't look like I have, but I have no problem with it. But like, I've got a US Airways napkin in here. So clearly, I do remember reading this on a flight once. Um, I took this with me on vacation. So like, if I have anything within arm's reach that can be used as a bookmark, if it's a receipt, a napkin, a piece of toilet paper, I think we've all probably done that, or maybe I'm just odd. If I have something I can use as a, as a bookmark, that will always be my preference, but I don't feel like I'm murdering the book by dog-earing a page. Number 16, a book you can always reread, Jane Austen. I don't reread her every year, but every now and then, like right now, I'm just really feeling like I want to reread Sense of Sensibility. Deborah Harkness, I've read more than twice. I've read her books a few times. There's a few other books like that. Sophie Kinsella's books, I can always read again. Anything with a good story, with a satisfying ending, and characters that I like, I have no problem 
rereading. Number 17, can you read while listening to music? Yes, in fact, I prefer to. I don't like doing anything in silence, but I especially don't like reading in silence. I don't listen to music with lyrics. So my favorite music to listen to tends to be film scores, and I will try to find a film score that's kind of similar to the mood or the genre of the book that I'm reading. Number 18, one POV or multiple. It depends. It depends on how good the author is at doing that. Some books are told really well through multiple POVs and you still get to know all of the characters. Others, I feel like a single POV is kind of the best because like, I, I want to feel like I'm getting to know the characters and so particularly the main character. So de as long as the characters are being developed properly I don't really mind. If I mind it it's usually because it's not being done well. I will say that. Number 19, do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? Either. It depends on how much time I have and it depends on how extensive the book is. The Vampire Knitting Club books I can read in like three hours each one. So there were a couple of those that I did kind of just read in one day. Whereas like I was recently rereading Deborah Harkness and those books like they say the little thing at the bottom of my Kindle says estimated reading time 10 hours. I'm not I'm not reading for 10 hours in one day. Um, so those would get split up between a few days. But I think the most I can sit and read in one sitting, I mean, I'll get up every now and then, but like, I can spend all morning or all afternoon, so like four or five hours. So if a book can be read in that span of time, then I will read it in one sitting. But if it's a longer book, then I will take more than that. And then number 20 is simply who do you tag? I tag anyone who wants to do this. If you like books and like the sound of these questions and you make videos, I would love for you to do this tag. Let me know so that I can go watch it. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I will leave the link to the blog post with the questions in the description box below. I will also leave the link to Shannon's video so you can go see her book tag, book questions tag. But yeah, I tag you if you want to do it you can consider yourself tagged. If you don't do videos but still liked these questions, feel free to answer any of the questions that you really enjoyed in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and answers to some of these questions, particularly dog-earing a book page. Like, am I being t a totally horrible evil human being for ever doing that? I don't think so, but apparently some people have very strong opinions about this topic. So yeah, let me know your answer, your thoughts on that in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, I would really appreciate that. Um, subscribe if you are not subscribed, I'd really appreciate that. And I will see you all soon in the next video. Thank you very much for watching this one. Bye bye!